In today's video, we're going to be going way back to 1977 to take a look at this RCA VTVM, also known as a vacuum tube voltage meter. The one you see here is made by RCA. It's a senior volt ohmist, model WV98C. I was very fortunate to find this meter in this outstanding condition. As you can see, this whole lens doesn't have any scratches on it. All through here is perfect. There's no chips. One little imperfection right here on the lens on the corner. Very minor, which I could live with, but it works perfectly. I found this at the ReStore, also known as a Goodwill store, and I only paid $14.88, and that includes tax. When I purchased this, it did not include the probe, which screws on right here, so I had to make this. I'll explain in a minute. Before I do that, let me give you some close-up shots of this VTVM so you can see how excellent the condition is. This unit is designed to be operated between 105 volts AC and 130 volts AC, 50 or 60 hertz. Considering this was made back in the mid to late 70s, it's pretty good the accuracy, plus or minus 3% of the full scale reading. You can measure resistance values between 0.2 ohms all the way up to 1000 mega ohm or 1 gig ohm. The housing is a very heavy die cast aluminum housing and it has a hammered finish. With this unit you can measure up to 1,500 volts DC. Ordinary meters like you see here, my WaveTech, and the one I just showed in a product review video, this one right here, the Must Tool. These go up to around 1,000 volts DC. So this does measure higher. And if you have a special attachment that goes over this probe tip, you can measure all the way up to 50,000 volts if needed. When it comes to measuring AC volts, you can measure up to 1,500 volts. And once again, meters like you see here usually only measure up to 750 volts. And keep in mind, this will also do peak-to-peak -peak AC voltage. You can see here, P-to-P, all the way up to 4,000 volts. The switches, everything about this unit is quality. It's not like things that are made today. The switches are so smooth, engaged nicely. Same with this one here. You have the off position, AC, RMS, which is the average AC voltage. You can also choose DC negative, DC positive, or the resistance setting. The input resistance of this meter is right around 11 mega ohm. Most of your digital meters are around 10 mega ohm. As a result of the dual triode vacuum tube installed in this unit, the panel meter is electronically protected. As you can see, you can make a few adjustments. There's a zero knob. There's an ohms adjustment knob, and on the back of the unit, let me turn this around. Right over here it says AC voltage adjustment. You can go through this hole to adjust the AC voltage, and behind this cover, which you'll see in a minute, there are three more adjustments you can make if needed. Now the cable for the probe screws on right here. This part right here with the threads that I'm pointing to has continuity with this wire coming out of the box. So these two are the same. The center right here is what connects to the probe tip right over here. Now let me show you what I had to do because I did have to buy a separate cable with a connector to make the probe. Okay, this is the probe I had to put together. I found this cable and that connector online at a very cool website. It deals with a lot of these older type of electronics they sell parts and much more. So I'm going to put the link to Mike's website in the video description area in the event that you need parts or anything else. You'll be able to find them fairly easily. He was very kind. He included this holder from a soldering iron. And the reason why I needed that is because the probe holder that came with the RCA VTVM had two positions. And the purpose of the two positions was to bypass a 1 mega ohm resistor or leave it in series with the tip and the connection to the VTVM. When the switch is in the position you see here, 
pushing forward. It's going to be for measuring DC voltage only. And you're going to have a 1 mega ohm resistor between the tip and the VTVM. When you slide the switch backwards, what's going to happen, it's going to short out that resistor, allowing a connection between the tip and the VTVM without the resistor. And this diagram here shows it very easily. Over here is the wire from the VTVM, and this is the wire leading to the probe. You have a switch, a common, and it's two positions. You could leave it in that position where these two terminals are shorted together, or you can slide this to the left, and this piece here will short out these two terminals. So right now, the way it is, the one mega ohm resistor is being shorted, so it's a straight wire. Slide it forward. Now the 1M is in series. Now before I open this unit up, because I always like to open things up on this channel to show my viewers what the inside of things look like and how they operate, I first would like to explain how a vacuum tube voltage meter works. Back in the mid to late 70s, a lot of electronics, radios, televisions, and devices like you see here, a lot of them still used vacuum tubes. Even though transistors came out in the early to mid 50s, they were not commonly used until the late 70s and then going into the early 80s. When I do open up this unit, you're going to see two types of tubes in here. You're going to see a smaller tube, which is a dual diode, which is used to rectify the alternating current input that you would measure before going to the triodes or a dual triode. And then you're going to see a larger tube, which is called a dual triode. Once I open up the unit, I'll also explain how they work, and I'll show you a diagram to make it easier. When the two triodes, which are inside that single vacuum tube, are in balance, what's going to happen, the needle is going to read zero. When a voltage is applied to the probe, right here to the center point, what's going to happen, the circuit is going to become unbalanced. When it becomes unbalanced, the needle will move. Okay, let's open up this unit and take a closer look. Okay, the cover's off. You can see how thick that aluminum housing is. Over here, you can see a door cell, D cell battery. There was an old battery installed in here. It was only 0.2 volts. And what this battery is used for is for the resistance readings. Without that battery, you will not be able to take resistance measurements. Now, I did want to use a D cell holder screw one in plastic, but what I had to do, because I did not have one handy, is I soldered the wires directly to the battery, as the person before me did. And it works just fine, and the battery should last a very long time. When the unit is powered up, you can see over here is a neon lamp. You turn that switch, power is then supplied from the receptacle to the primary winding of the step-down transformer, and at the same time, power is delivered to the neon lamp. There are two sets of outputs on the secondary and you can see over here there's a 10 microfarad we rotate this 200 volt electrolytic capacitor and that's used to smooth out any ripples once that alternating current goes through that diode that metal can you see is just a single diode it's not full wave rectification once the current gets past that diode we're going to have DC current that's going to have a lot of ripples and the electrolytic capacitors used to smooth out those ripples. Now this looks like an original electrolytic capacitor and because it's original more than likely the electrolyte inside is dried up and the dielectric material inside that capacitor has begun to break down. So I'm going to take an ESR tester and we're going to measure the ESR across this capacitor as well as check the value. What I'm going to do is take this Japanese-made 33 microfarad 200 volt electrolytic and swap this one out. Over here, you can see the adjustments. AC0, that's an adjustment for DC negative, another adjustment for AC voltage, and DC positive. You can see all the traces. Very, very heavy, coated in solder. Let's take a look at the inside now. Now the only thing I found inside this unit, which potentially needs to be replaced, which I probably will replace, is going to be the electrolytic capacitor. Inside this unit there are many precision, 1% resistors, you can see the blue ones all in here, as well as a bunch of ceramic capacitors. They last a very, very long time and they do not fail. There's also an inductor in here, you can see it in there. 
but right over here you can see the diode tube. It's a dual diode tube. Got this high quality switch with different levels. Let's take a look at this side here. Over here you can see more of the precision resistors all lined up and you can see the switch with multiple levels. Same on this side. On the opposite side you can see where I soldered the negative onto the battery for the resistance readings. You can see more of the multi-levels of the switch and you can see the triode right here. Inside there's just a few more resistors on the bottom and that's about it. You can see the meter right here in the center. Before I test the electrolytic capacitor and power up this unit to demonstrate, what I want to do first is explain how these vacuum tubes operate. Okay, the first tube I'm going to be talking about is the triode. This is a schematic symbol showing only a single triode. Inside the VTVM is a dual. Now if you look here, you have a plate, which is the anode, which is positive. Over here, coming up and hooking over, is the cathode. Very close position to the cathode is the heater. Now the heater draws around a third of an amp and it uses around six volts and the purpose of that heater is to heat up that cathode and the vacuum inside the tube and by doing that current will then be allowed to flow. The electrons will flow between the cathode and the anode. The grid is what controls how much flows between the two plates. The best way to compare this to a modern day transistor, the grid would be the base of the transistor where you would input a signal that you want amplified or if you wanted to use a transistor as a switch, the grid would be the base. The anode or the plate would be known as the collector of the transistor and the cathode or the negative part is the emitter of the transistor. Down here you see the diode. Once again, this is only a single diode, not a dual. You have an anode plate just like you had in the triode. You have a cathode right here and then you have a heater. Once the heater is powered up, the cathode will heat up as well. Electrons will then be able to flow from the cathode to the anode. This tube here is used to rectify AC voltage. Now I'm going to take out the ESR meter and we're going to check that old electrolytic capacitor. What I'm going to do is I'm going to desolder this electrolytic capacitor even though I can test it in circuit, the ESR, as well as the capacitance. And the reason for that is even if it does test okay, I'm still going to change it out for this very nice Japanese-made electrolytic capacitor. This is a 105C. The one here is a 65C so I'd rather switch them out. So let me desolder the capacitor and then we'll test it out. Alright, this is what the capacitor looks like once it's removed. You can see the positive the tip and the other wires soldered to the can. This meter right here will tell me not only the capacitance but also the ESR and many other functions. If you have not seen my previous video where I showed this tester as well as a power supply unit at a great price, then be sure to check it out in the video description area. There's also coupon codes that you can use to save money when making a purchase, and you'll also be supporting my channel. The price is extremely reasonable on this. Okay, let me connect it up. Doesn't make a difference which one you use. Let's go over here. Let me push this button for test. Right now it says capacitor, C, and 13.4 microfarad, not bad, it's rated 10, voltage loss 0.9%, ESR 3.5 ohms, which really is not bad for a 10 microfarad capacitor of this voltage. Very surprising considering the age. Even though that capacitor tests okay, I could actually leave it in there if I wanted, I am going to swap it out and I'm going to be using the other one I showed you. Okay, this is the Japanese electrolytic capacitor. I did have to make the leads longer 
in order to fit inside the unit because the spacing was further apart on the other electrolytic capacitors leads. Let me test this to see what this one's at. And the ESR is way lower than the one that was installed. This is only 0.14. V loss 0.5 percent. And the capacitance is fine. It's just a hair lower than the rating at 32.16. Let me install it and then we're going to power up the unit. To make the probe all I did was take the soldering iron handle which is very very thick plastic. I kept the part where the heater was inserted with the mica. There is mica wrapped inside this piece of metal. Inside that tube I slid a pen all the way in through the center of the tube into the handle. The wire is fed up through the tube where it's soldered to a copper nail. I applied heat shrink with glue over the end so nothing can move. Right over here you can see the electrolytic capacitor is now soldered in position. Alright, it's plugged in. Let me turn it to DC volts positive. See the needle move down a little bit. And it's going to take some time for this to warm up, just like tube televisions going back into the late 70s. You would have to wait a little while for them to warm up and the picture quality would get much better. While the unit is warming up over the next several minutes, I'm going to place the unit in a dark area and I'm going to zoom in on the vacuum tubes. We're now looking at the dual diode tube and you can see the heaters are operating just fine. If one side was off, it's possible the heaters burned out, but you can also check for voltage at the heater pins in the socket to make sure there is voltage being supplied to the heater. Usually it's a lack of voltage to the tube or a faulty heating element. And you can see the heaters here on the triode on that end and also on that end. Let me put the cover back on the unit as it's warming up so I could demonstrate how it works. The VTVM is now fully warmed up and you can see the power indicator neon lamp and I have the meter set to measure resistance. All the way over here you can see the infinity line. It's lined up straight. Now it's also important to note when you're taking measurements on any analog meter you have to make sure you're looking at it straight on. If you don't look at it straight on, if this needle was pointing at the 4 and you were positioned over here to the left looking at that needle, it's going to appear to be around 4.3 or 4.2 and if you're standing over to this side looking at that needle the 4 is going to appear to be around 3.8 now what that error is called is parallax and this little tiny mirror the strip that goes all the way through is there for a reason when you look at the needle you should only see one needle between there and the mirror if you see two needles like I'm seeing right now from my angle that means I'm going to have to move my head more to the right until there's only one needle showing up in front of that mirror. Then you're going to have an accurate reading. Now I already did a lot of the calibration on this meter. All I have to do is just do a little bit of zeroing here and using the ohms zero knob. Right now you can see it's pointing exactly at the infinity line and it's on the R times one range. So if I take this right here, the probe, and I make sure it's on AC and ohms, which is at the bottom, and I touch it, it'll swing all the way to the left, which means it's basically a short circuit. And what I want to do now is I'm going to take my WaveTech digital meter, and we're going to take a look at something here. Let me turn this on. Okay. This meter has the ability to measure all the way up to 2 gig ohm. This one says 1 gig ohm, but it actually goes a little higher. So what I'm going to do is take one of these high value resistors out of a survey meter. And it's very important, you can see the meter moving around. I have to make sure my wires are held apart, just like this. Just having the wires touching, like this right there, is going to affect the reading. So what I'm going to do is take the resistor to get a reading on it to see what it is here and compare it to this meter. So let me hold one there, here, and hold it up. And let's see what we get. OK, 
Okay, it's settled out right around 200 mega ohm. So now what I want to do is take a look on the gauge here. Let me switch this up to the times one meg setting. And I might have to adjust the ohm. See it pulled to the right, no good. Okay, that's looking pretty good from my angle. The camera might make it appear that it's off, but it is lined up. Let me take the resistor now, put it inside here, touch the probe, and see if this swings to 200. And it looks pretty good. It's just a hair under 200 megs. Now I want to take a look at another one. This one here is a 2 gig ohm resistor. And my wave tech is limited to 2 gig ohm, and it will go in and out at that range. So I'm not going to even bother showing you, but it will grab it a little bit. But let's take a look on here. The needle should move towards the 1 gig ohm. Let's see. Here we go. Keep an eye on the needle. All right, you can see it's there, and it does move to the left. Watch. And it goes back. So it's right between the infinity line and the 1 gig ohm. So you could tell if there's values well above 1 gig ohm, which is pretty good. Now what I want to do is switch to the DC voltage range. Okay, very easy. Just adjust right here. Now I'm going to switch this over to DC voltage. This puts the resistor in series between the tip and the VTVM. Let me move it over to the 15 volt range, which is 40 volt peak to peak if you were measuring AC voltage. That's still at zero. I checked this right here. Let's take a look what the voltage is of this 9 volt battery. And right around 983. And I checked it on the must tool, and it comes up at 9.8. So it's right around 9.8, 983. Let's take a look here. Right over here is your DC voltage range. Whatever the reading comes up over here on this range, you're going to multiply by 10. So if it's 0.8, it's going to become 8. 0.9, it'll be 9. Here we go. And you can see right there, it's coming in right around 9.75. If I switch to the next higher range here, let's take a look what happens. Should come out over here now by the 1 or just below. All right. And if I switch it even lower to the next range, I mean higher, it should go to the point 0.1 over here. And it's right around 0.1. That's all working good. Now let me put this on just a 5 volt setting and let me zero it. Actually, let me put it on a 1.5. Now this battery here, let's take a look with this. See what it is. One forty six, one forty seven. Look right over here, one point four six, right about that, one point four seven. So that's working very well. Now I'm going to take a crank mega, which you're going to see in another video along with an electronic one when I explain how they work, as well as show you a great deal on one. I'm going to take the mega, this one right here. I'm sure you've seen these type. All right, it's got the handle on the front. I'm going to take that. It says 250 volt or 500 volt. I checked it using my digital meter and it comes out at 585 when you crank it on the 500 setting and it comes in right around 290 on the 250 volt setting. So let me connect this up set this all the way to the highest, which is 1500. Well, let me do it 500 first, because now I'm going to set the mega to the 250 volt range. Let me connect it up to the wires here. Okay. 
connect it to the probe. I'm going to crank and we'll take a look at the scale right in here. And we're going to be multiplying that by 100. Two decimal places to the right. Here we go. And you can see it's right around 280, 2.8, move it two places to the right, and you got 280. Now I'm going to switch it up to 500 volts. Let's move this up to the 1500 range. And it appears to be pretty good on zero. Now you're going to be looking at the smaller scale, whatever it is, add three decimal places to the right. Here we go on the 500 range should be 580. There you go. And you just saw the reading at 0.58, which would be 580 when you move the decimal places three to the right. If the voltage was 1500, you would see it show up over here at 1.5, move the decimal three to the right, and you'll have 1500. Now you're going to notice over here it says zero center. Now if I wanted to measure DC negative and positive pulses at the same time, what I would do is center the needle right on zero center right there, going straight up the middle, and then I'd be able to have the positive and negative movement on that needle. If you want to measure negative voltage, you could set it to DC minus right there. Put this back there, and then you'd be good to go all these ranges to measure DC negative. If I wanted to measure AC voltage, I could do that on this setting right here. RMS will give me an average, or I could do P-P, which means peak to peak, and that voltage will show up on these scales right here. Low AC voltage would show up at the bottom, and the higher would show up at the top. Now when you're measuring AC voltage with this unit, you have to be very, very careful that the hot side goes to the probe. You don't want the hot side going on here because what will happen, the case will probably pick up that charge and you can get a shock. The last test I'm going to be doing is testing a 120 volt AC line. So let me switch this up to the 150 range. Right there, let me zero it. Okay, I'm connected to the AC line. You're seeing right around 122 volts. Going to turn that off, disconnect, and connect it to the VTVM. Okay, I'm connected up to 120 volts. Right here is the neutral. The probe has the switch down for AC and ohms. I'm going to touch the tip of the probe off to the side here to a 120 volt hotline. Look for the reading to show up on the scale, probably around the 1.2. There you have it, 1.2, and you would multiply that by 100 to have 120. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much.